Hello friends, this is Alex. In today's video, we are going to discuss about very useful and important topic, not only important, which is a life-saving topic for everyone, not only a medical person, even for a layman also it is useful, that is called BLS. What is BLS? So what is BLS? BLS is nothing but basic life support basic life support and what is basic life support what are the events involving in and what are the procedures involving in and what we will do in bls so all those things we are going to discuss and what are the current updates in the bls according to the aha aha stands for aha american art association so these people will give the standards okay uh, for the bls and acls Mainly, we will uh, focusing on BLS in this video. So, what is a BLS and what are the uh, procedures involving and what are the current updates we will discuss. So, what do you do in this uh, BLS mainly? We will do CPR. We will do CPR. CPR stands for Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation. So, what is a Cardiopulmonary Resuscitation? In this, uh, and to whom we will give this CPR? To whom we will give this CPR. So there are mainly two uh, differences. So like uh, we will give the CPR is instituted to a patient in a cardiac arrest. So what is cardiac arrest? Can we give this CPR to the heart attack patients? Heart attack patients? Answer is no. Okay. So there is a difference between the cardiac arrest and heart attack. Okay. So only we will give this CPR to the cardiac arrest patients. What is happening in cardiac arrest means in the heart there is an electrical conduction system will be there. So that will uh, not functioning properly. So then what happening? Heart will uh, not function properly. Okay, heart will stop uh, beating. Okay, then the, that is called as a cardiac arrest. But in case of heart attack that is related to a pumping problem. Okay wherein uh, some part of the heart uh, will not supply the proper blood okay so that uh, the part will go, going to necrotize it means will die the cells of the heart portion of the cells of the uh, heart will be die so that is called heart attack so there is a difference but in main major differences like in cardiac arrest you won't feel the pulse there is no response and even uh, pulmonary system also will not pulse no no respirations will be there but uh, coming to the heart attack, you will have a pulse and patient may be responsive and he may complain of pain, okay, and uh, respirations also will be there. So there are uh, major differences like between the heart attack and the cardiac arrest. Only in case of cardiac arrest, we will give the CPR, okay, cardiac or pulmonary arrest. So CPR we will give in a uh, cardiac arrest situation. So what is here, uh, what is mean by CPR? So, cardio related to heart, okay, pulmonary related to lungs. So, and what is resuscitation, revival, okay, by giving a lots of fluids or drugs. So, that is called CPR. And what are the uh, events involving in this uh, adult chain of survival? Mainly in this video, we will focusing on the adult uh, CPR, okay. So, there are uh, lots of differences between the adult, uh, infant and uh, neonate cprs also according to the 2020 guidelines 2020 aha guidelines okay so we have a six things are there okay one, one two three four five six events and mainly two major differences this is one type and this is another type this is a adult ihca means ihca stands for inside inside hospital cardiac arrest what is the chain of survival what is the action chain of survival is and this is another one is OHCA. OHC means outside hospital chain of um, uh, outside hospital cardiac arrest. So here what is the thing in the inside hospital first early recognition and prevention, activation of emergency response, high quality CPR, defibrillation, post cardiac arrest and the newly added thing is recovery. Okay, recovery and the same thing if it is an outside hospital first uh, thing is you need to activate activation of emergency response high quality cpr 
and defibrillation, advanced uh, resuscitation, it means, uh, uh, means post cardiac arrest is the fifth one and sixth one again recovery. Okay, recovery. So these are the two newly added things from the 2020 by the AHA in the uh, BLS uh, chain of survival. So these are the new updates. And next coming to the uh, one more thing from the 2015 onwards this uh, uh, sequence also changed from the 2015. So previously it was like ABC. Okay, airway, breathing, circulation. But now it is a CAB. Okay, first circulation. We need to improve the circulation means giving a chest compressions. Compressions. Okay, and next airway. Airway management and breathing. Okay, so, so this, is, this is a sequence. CAB, first compression, then airway, then breathing. This is, this is also update. And what is uh, CAV already I told you compressions and minimum 100 to 120 per minute. This is the rate rate of compressions and airway. We have to keep the uh, head till chin lift position head till chin lift position and jaw thrust position. Okay, then breathing coming to the breathing mouth to mouth breathing. You can give mouth to mask bag and mask. Okay, if these two things will be in a hospital if it is outside hospital. Uh, maybe you are a layman, there is no medical equipment, you can give mouth to mouth respiration. How many breaths you have to give? One breath every 3 to 5 seconds. Uh, means uh, rate you have to maintain uh, frequency like uh, between 12 to 20 breaths of per minute. Okay, this is about CAB. So, same thing like uh, CPR. Uh, so, involves first compressions, airway, breathing. Okay, I will tell you in the next uh, slides uh, how, what is the high quality CPR, all those things. So now I will give you a scenario. So imagine a person collapses suddenly in front of you. What you will do? Okay. Imagine you are outside the hospital. Mostly we will discuss about the hospital outside the hospital because everyone can do. So even a uh, even in a hospital also, uh, if he is a non-medical like a housekeeping person or a security guard or any non-medical person also. So what they have to do? Are uh, if you are a nurse or a doctor or a technician? So what you will do? Suppose a person collapsed in front of you. What are the uh, things you need to do? So what are the points you need to remember? First thing, verify the scene safety. So what you need to do? You need to do verify the scene safety. Scene safety, uh, it means I will tell one by one points. You just first remember the uh, sequence of points. Verify the scene safety. First thing. Second one, check for the responsiveness. And next, call for help and activation of emergency response system. So this is the two things. So if you're outside hospital different, inside hospital is different again. And fourth point is check for pulse. And next thing, uh, chest compressions. You need to immediately start the compressions if the patient is not having a pulse. Okay, next uh, giving a effective breaths. And next, defibrillation. So these are the seven points you need to remember uh, and you need to do uh, in case a person collapse in front of you. Okay, what you need to do first verify the scene safety check for responsiveness call for help and activation of emergency response system check for pulse chest uh, start the chest compressions and give effective breathings and start give the defibrillation. So for we will see one by one. So verifying scene safety first thing verifying scene safety verifying scene safety is very very important. You need to um, verify that particular scene, uh, the location is safety for the both the rescuer and the victim. Okay, you first we have to as a rescuer, you have to take care of yourself first. Okay, you need to be in a safe position, and at the same time, you need to uh, check the uh, victim's area also whether he is in a safe position or not. Imagine a person is uh, collapsed in the or uh, drowned in the uh, water. Okay, I mean in the swimming pool. What you will do? Will you go and give the compressions inside the pool only or will you check the pulse in the inside the pool? What you will do? You will take him outside the swimming pool and place him on a flat surface area. Okay, then that is a safe for the both the rescuer and the victim. Then you start doing the next next points like checking pulse or activation emergency system or giving compression breathing all those things. At the same time, 
uh, mm, another scenario like a, imagine a person uh, co uh, collapsed because of a heavy fire okay fire accident as a full of fires is there or just because of, or because of any other uh, short circuits okay electrical things what you will do first you will do the um, means bring him out of the uh, serious situation to a safe area okay then you will start to performing the next steps okay uh, are are suppose uh, person collapse inside the uh, lift okay don't give the compressions or breathing or checking pulse all those things in the lift you need to stop the lift and take him outside the lift and uh, performing the next steps and suppose on a staircase or at the very closed areas okay you need a help you are not a superman or a uh, james bond to perform all the activities alone so you need help and you need to take care of yourself as a rescuer and next take care of the victim so that is called verifying the scene safety so your scene should be in a safe position it means bring the victims to the safest area and keep um, make him lie down on the uh, flat area and start performing the next step next step suppose imagine if it is outside hospital uh, he collapsed in the uh, mall okay or in a hospital also opd area full rush will be there or in a traffic okay the traffic signal are somewhere so what you will do you need to bring him uh, out of that traffic or out of that crowdy area to a safest area then uh, start performing the next steps that is called verifying the scene safety next point is check for the responsiveness so now the victim is safe and the rescuer also in safe place next as a rescuer what you need to do you need to do the response of the patient how you will uh, check the response of the particular patient or victim means i mean victim so uh, how you will check by tapping on the two shoulders by calling if you know that person name call by name by tapping or if you know the if you don't know that person's name at least by suppose if he is a male by tapping on the shoulders hello sir are you okay hello sir are you okay hello sir are you okay like that by tapping not by shaking okay only tap if you shake sometimes there is a um, suppose a patient is having a cervical injury or any uh, brain related problems then there uh, that is that leads to a severe complication so only by tapping loudly on the shoulders uh, call check the response like hello sir are you okay hello madam are you okay or if you know the name hello ramu are you okay hello sita are you okay like that by tapping on the hands you check the response if there is a response then wait for the ne next step if there is no response well, what you will do next step call for help okay if there is no response imagine patient uh, victim is not responding so there is no response you need to call for help because i told you already so alone if if any persons are there definitely you need to take a help because alone cannot do the, all the uh, things successfully okay because we are not a you know, film heroes or we are not a james bond to perform all the activities you need a help so how you will take the help show you need to shout for the help you if somebody is there in in front of you or nearby or uh, besides you if you know that person name uh, please mention clearly uh, mr sita go and activate the emergency system and get the dp please okay like that if you don't know the name of that uh, your friend or somebody is there then what you'll do may uh, at least specify with the um, height of the person or a weight of the person or at least a color code of that person uh, so like that you need to uh, take the help like how you'll take mister please go and activate the emergency system and get the aed please okay that is the uh, activation of emergency system and getting a help okay if nobody is there what you'll do how, how you need to activate the emergency system then uh, if nobody is there then uh, take your mobile if you have a mobile then uh, pay, keep in a loudspeaker and dial the emergency system then uh, meanwhile you uh, do the next steps okay that is called taking of a help next, uh, checking the pulse okay if there is no if there is no pulse uh, then how you will check first how you will check mostly uh, in, in this situation there is no response it means already person collapsed is not responding then uh, you have to you should not check the 
peripheral pulse central pulse you have to check how you will check the central pulse okay take this three fingers or two fingers okay place him on the this uh, uh, trachea okay and just slightly push it to the push it to the uh, side between the sternocleidomastoid and the this sterno, uh, tracheal uh, there is a groove in this groove you just uh, feel the pulse okay and how you will check this pulse and how much time you need to check you need to check the pulse for at least 5 to 10 seconds and how to count in that uh, senior uh, severe situation you, uh, you 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 will not have a time to check the watch and all so how you will check the pulse means by counting the 1001 1002 1003 1004 1005 1006 1007 1008 1009 1010 so it means 1001 means it, it resembles to one second so like that you will check check for the pulse 5 to 10 seconds imagine there is no pulse then what you will do next step go for the next step so there is no pulse next immediately initiate the chest compressions how you will uh, initiate the chest compressions so there is a thing what is a high quality cpr how you will give how you will give the compressions so uh, you have to remember some of the points for giving the chest compression placing of the hands and uh, rate of the compression depth of the compression and how much fast you have to give and what whether it should be recoil or not all these points to be remembered so there are some high quality cpr steps are there what is a high quality cpr if you are following or if you fulfilling all these points only then that is considered as a high quality cpr that is called first thing location where you will place the place your hands lower one third of the sternum so uh, this is a sternum the central bone uh, between the ribs so sternum will be there so lower one third of the sternum how to uh, how to locate exactly between the two nipples region between the two nipples just below the two nipples region you place the center of your palm means heel of this palm okay first place the non-dominant hand on the sternum okay on the sternum and next place the dominant hand on the non-dominant and interlock these fingers interlock okay then you just uh, don't place all over the palm okay place the base of the palm or heel of the palm base of the palm on the sternum and uh, interlock then give uh, start giving compressions that is your location and placing of hands and when you are giving compressions your elbow should not be bent okay it should be a straight okay elbows should be straight okay place the base of the palm on the sternum lower one third of the sternum okay and how much rate you have to give uh, 100 to 120 compressions per minute you have to give 100 to 120 compressions per minute you have to give so that is the fast speed okay rate and how much depth you have to compress each compression should be go at least 5 centimeters are uh, 2 to 2.5 inches okay at least 5 centimeters in adults okay you have to compress you have it should, should go inside 5 centimeters and what is the next point push hard and fast push hard and fast so that is uh, same like depth like a for adults 5 centimeters or 2.5 inches and for children's 4 centimeters the depth and you have to give compression push hard and fast not slowly and not smoothly okay hard and fast so because you need to maintain the rate of a 100 to 120 compressions per minute and uh, for after each compression what you need to allow allow chest to recoil completely allow chest to recoil completely after each compression because if you are compressing heart will compress okay the blood will pump out and if you recoil again the waste blood will go inside the heart means deoxygenated blood so compression recoiling compression recoiling means means uh, you need to compress five centimeters inside and at the same time five centimeters outside okay compression recoil also should be there and uh, you need to minimize the interruptions okay minimize the interruptions in between the compression the compressions in be uh, interruptions like not more than 10 seconds so uh, interruption should be less than 10 seconds when you are switching our roles okay from a uh, compression part to the respiratory part breathing part then uh, that also should be takes place less than 10 seconds you have to minimize the compressions and avoid excessive ventilation the 
compression ventilation ratio should be 30 is to 2 for adults okay so that is called avoid excessive ventilation so these are the uh, seven points you need to remember so location lower one third of the sternum rate 100 to 120 compressions per minute and depth at least 5 centimeter push hard and fast allow chest to recoil okay minimize interruptions and avoid excessive ventilations so these are the high quality cpr points and next thing i told you already location where you need to do proper technique for chest compressions okay placing on the sternum uh, sternum middle bone okay lower one third of the lower one third of the sternum and first non dominant arm and uh, next dominant and interlock the fingers and re means push hard and fast and when you are compressing uh, giving compressions your elbow should not be bent and you have to bend on completely to the uh, completely on the patient okay your chest and the patient chest should be in a 90 degrees position okay if you are giving a proper compressions you will not get a uh, pains in the arms okay you will get a pain in the back okay that is then you are giving a, a proper compressions that is the thing and next rate and depth already i told you and the next thing is uh, about uh, breathings okay how you will give effective breathings okay and uh, airway also head tilt chin lift position uh, airway how you will do how you will maintain airway airway by head tilt chin lift position chin lift position okay you need to uh, elevate the uh, head means hyper extend hyper extend hyper extension of the head like this neck okay then chin lift head tilt and chin lift okay got to do then the airway will be free head tilt chin lift position okay that is a uh, thing for the airway management and uh, the jaw thrust method also will be there for any cervical injury patients then next breathing how you will do by giving a mouth to mouth respiration or mouth to mask bag and mask bag and mask ventilation so by give, for giving bag and mask uh, ventilation you, there is a technical ec technique how to hold the uh, ambu uh, mask and okay ambu bag okay so this is called ec technique by um, holding the ambu bag mask with a frame the c with the thumb finger and index finger okay by it um, by the thumb and index finger fix the mask to the mouth and uh, with uh, with the remaining three fingers frame it e and lift okay like uh, fixing and lifting the jaw okay lifting the head up uh, lower jaw so the the then what happens the airway will be uh, free so that is called ec clamp technique bag and mask ventilation when you are giving a bag and mask ventilation you need to fix the mask with the, the ec technique so uh, frame a c with the thumb and index finger and with the remaining three fingers uh, it frames like a it looks like a e and lift the uh, lower jaw okay next thing is defibrillation okay so defibrillation if you are inside the hospital you will get you will use the uh, defibril defibrillation uh, de defibrillator but if you are outside hospital what you will do or um, if you are in any shopping mall or in a cinema theater or in a outside any public areas okay suddenly you saw if somebody collapse so nowadays everywhere it is available so uh, there you will use a aed we will discuss about outside thing main first now aed stands for automated automated external defibrillator okay automated external defibrillator this is a simple device if you uh, open that device so it gives uh, some promptings okay instructions you need you have to follow that instruction that's it okay if you don't know just if you know minimum english understanding so it will give you instruction then if you follow the instruction automatically it gives the uh, shock if it is a shockable rhythm okay so that is the thing so how to use this aed i'll just uh, show you quickly uh, what are all the things involving in the AED uses? First, first point is uh, power on the AED. So I will show the images also in the next slides. And the rescuer 
attaches the AED pads to the victim. Next, there is a two pads will be there. Okay, one is on the uh, right side. Okay, on the uh, top top, uh, top right side, and uh, another one is um, left side below the heart area. Okay, there are two two pads will be there. Two pads to be attached to the victim and plug in the connector. Third point is plug in the connector beside the flashing light. Okay, uh, so there is a connector to, from the pads. You have to connect to the that AED where the flashing light will be there. Then clear the victim before rhythm analysis. So we should not touch the pa patient. Okay, we should not touch the victim when the uh, AED is um, analyzing the rhythm. Okay. And it will give you an instruction, clear the area, okay, for analyzing the rhythm. Then AED operators clears the victim before delivering shock. Okay, whenever the AED gives an instruction to uh, clear the victim for giving a shock, the shock patient victim is uh, having a shockable rhythm, then we need to give shock like that it will say, then you should not touch the patient victim, then it gives the shock. Okay, after shock given, second rescuer start the cpr again okay again continue the cpr until the uh, rhythm comes normally okay so these are the steps involving the power on the aed first point for usaging aed and next point uh, next button next point uh, attach the pads on the patients so these two pads one pad is on the uh, right side and there is the left side okay uh, so Two pads you need to attach this is the positioning of the pads and next you plug in the connector okay after this so this uh, this we are attaching this plugging in the um, aed okay plugging in this uh, connector to the aed and next clear the victim for analyzing the rhythm next thing so uh, if it is a shockable rhythm it says shock then we have to press the shock button then immediately next start giving the uh, second uh, CPR okay until the rhythm comes okay that is about usaging of the AED and next uh, suppose imagine if the patient achieve ROS what is ROS return of spontaneous uh, spontaneous circulation okay so if the patient is achieved this thing then what you have to do integrated post cardiac care so this is a thing now we have to focusing on the after the post cardiac after the cardiac arrest if the patient survives means come to comes to the normal uh, uh, thing then what we have to focus we have to focusing on this 5 h sun 5 t's okay 5 h 5 t's okay focus on the so your hypovolemia by giving a plenty of fluids okay and uh, correct the hypoxia okay uh, by giving a, a sufficient oxygenation or by either if you are in a hospital by doing a intubation connect to the ventilator or if you are outside the hospital by giving mouth to mouth or back and mask ventilation so hypoxia correction hydrogen ion ion correction means acidosis correction okay so by giving soda bicarbonate hypokalemia hyperkalemia correction potassium corrections hypothermia giving maintaining a proper temperature okay so uh, these are the five h's and coming to the uh, T's, five T's, you have to focusing on the tension pneumothorax and tamponade, cardiac tamponade, okay, toxins and pulmonary thrombosis and cardiac thrombosis. These are all the points we have to correct after the achieving the ROS. So this is about uh, basic life support, BLS. Okay, so that's all about uh, basic life support. Uh, I hope it, it is helpful for you guys. So if you like my channel, please. Uh, if you like the campaign, uh, content, please like, share, subscribe and uh, please support me. Thank you.